Hey there, and welcome back to Transformers War for Cybertron. As you recall, in the last few episodes, I showed you the previously unavailable DLC characters. And now, on that same note, I'm going to be running through the DLC multiplayer maps. I'll be doing this via the art file swap I covered in my modding tutorial, and I'll show you detailed instructions on how to set everything up for each map. We'll be covering both the first and second DLC maps all in one video. So get comfy, this is going to be a long one. Also, any links to any files you may need can be found in the description. But, with that out of the way, let's get started. To start it all off, we have Fortress. Fortress is an enclosed courtyard with a large number of walkways as well as entry points scattered around the perimeter. This map in particular is based in Kaon, and aside from a few minor bugs, it's pretty much perfect. But before I get too ahead of myself with all the details, let me show you just how you go about setting this level up. So before we even begin here, you'll need to download the DLC map package I've prepared for you, which includes the Trans Engine package data you'll need, the TFC files so the textures actually work in game, and of course the map files in question. So once you have everything extracted, select all the TFC files, then cut them and paste them into your cooked PC folder. Because if you don't have these, all the maps are going to appear solid black. So, very important that you get these on. After that's done, let's head back and grab the files for Fortress. Start by taking the art and audio files and pasting them in your cooked PC folder. Next, we want to prepare the files we want to swap over. So, for this swap in particular, we're going to be using Chapter 2. So, scroll up to D2, and locate D2 Core Cave Art M, and just throw an O at the end of it to mark it as the original. Now, find your Fortress Art file, and rename that to D2 Core Cave Art M. And that will replace the cave checkpoint. Now, additionally, you can do the exact same thing with the audio files. Just add a O to the name of the original file, and then give the Fortress audio file the exact same name as the original file. And there you go! The swap portion of this process is complete. But there's still a little bit more to do. Let's move on to setting up our Trans Engine file. If you've been following my modding tutorial video, you should have a modded map folder in your WFC directory. If you don't, refer to that video for more guidance. Otherwise, go ahead and open your Trans Engine file. We're going to be pasting our package data under the D2 section, which is all listed in the package data readme. All you have to do is select it, copy it, and paste it in your Trans Engine file under the D2 section, and then be sure to save it. But don't forget, you'll need to copy all these packages from the cooked PC folder into your modded map folder. Now, I've gone ahead and prepared all the packages in advance, but you'll have to go through your own cooked PC folder and set these all up yourself. Also, make sure you include Fortress Base as one of those files, because if you don't, you may encounter some texture bugs. But once you've found all the files you need, go ahead and cut them and paste them into your modded map folder. And Fortress is officially set to go. Head into game and start Chapter 2. Upon starting Chapter 2, nothing's gonna look too different right away, but just proceed as you would normally, until you come to this section here. You'll see a giant blank space has taken the spot of the next area. And if you zoom in, you'll find a new area off in the distance. Press the O key to be teleported straight to it. Once you arrive, just fly into the borders of the map, and you'll be all set to explore. Something to mention before we start the tour is that you may notice a significant difference in the sky. It lacks the green fog that was present in the original version of the map. Not a terrible bug by any means, but one that is still worth mentioning. As far as its general design goes, Fortress is a rather tight map, so it's not exactly ideal for flying. But this scene does give you a general idea on how the exterior of the map flows.
Moving on to the interior, one of the more notable features on this map is the water room to the left. It has a couple side ramps that allow you to go down further to where an overshield would have been kept. Though, as you can see, pickups are not present in the art files of the map. On the opposite side of the water room is a tunnel system that connects to both the Autobot and Decepticon sides of the map, making for a great flanking route. Speaking of sides, let's take a look at each faction side, starting with the Decepticons. Now the Decepticon side suffers from a pretty significant bug. As you can see, part of the map has not loaded in. This is likely due to where the checkpoints are split up in campaign. However, it will fully load in once you approach it. And inside, you'll find the Decepticon spawn room that has four different routes, each leading to a different section of the map. Continuing on the con side of the map, we have this small side room with a whole bunch of... stuff. Huh. Well, moving on to the opposite side of the map, we have the Autobot spawn room, which is fully operational, aside from a couple missing manholes that I sadly was unable to find the textures for in the PC version of the game. The Autobots also have their own side room, with several Energon batteries in the middle, and even a small room full of torture tables. Huh. Faction rooms aside, this level was definitely designed with the land-based characters in mind. The scattered tunnels and paths around the perimeter make for great vehicular combat. And that is all there is to show for Fortress. A little buggy, but otherwise works fine. Well, we're just getting started here, so let's move on to the next one! Up next, we have Havoc. A much more open environment than Fortress, Havoc is based on the orbital station level seen in Chapter 1. The map features a large platform in the center that is surrounded by bridges on the upper level and various side routes on the lower level. But let's break away from that real quick and show how exactly you set this level up. So setting up Havoc is the exact same procedure you used for Fortress. Start by copying over the necessary package data from the README into your Trans Engine file. Okay, that's all good. Next, take both your Havoc art and Havoc audio and paste them into your cooked PC folder. Now once again, head back to your D2 files. We're modifying the exact same checkpoint we did for Fortress. So again, add a O to the end of D2 core cave art. Do the same to the audio file. Then, rename your Havoc audio and art files accordingly. And once you've done that, all you have to do now is copy in the necessary packages from your cooked PC folder into your modded map folder. Which I have again prepared in advance, so you don't have to do this yourself manually, but memorize all the files here, then just take them and paste them into your modded map folder. And you are now ready to unleash some havoc. And you reach havoc the exact same way you reached the fortress. Lock your crosshair onto the large object in the distance, and press the O key. And once you arrive, you can actually fly around outside the station. Which, I gotta admit, is actually pretty fun. Then, once you reach the front of the map, all you have to do is teleport through this barrier and... You're in! Now, if there is one thing I can say about Havoc, it's that it's a scientist's paradise. Not only does the center of the map give you plenty of space to fly around in, but there is also a couple of elevated platforms that only scientists can reach. These platforms would give you a huge advantage over your ground-based enemies. Though, to be fair, the lower level below the central platform gives you plenty of room to lap around in.
You could even find overshields stashed behind these crates. But let's move on to the faction side of things. Both the Autobots and Decepticons have pretty much identical spawn rooms on opposite ends of the map. Both have a upper level and a lower level that lead out to the center of the map. Though, the Autobots get a really sweet view of the planet Cybertron. And just to the side of the spawn rooms are each faction's secondary rooms, both of which follow the same general design, but with a few slight distinctions. Both have an upper level that connects to the central platform, just like their spawn rooms. But the Autobots again get another sweet view of Cybertron. The upper levels also have a catwalk that will wrap back around to the lower level. Which will also lead you back out to the center of the map, as well as lead you back to the center of the side room. Now, jumping over to the Decepticon side, the Decepticon spawn room is pretty much a spitting image of the Autobot room, though it has a significantly noticeable missing texture issue that I unfortunately was unable to resolve. However, that aside, it connects to the central platform and lower level, just like the Autobot spawn room. And aside from that one missing texture, it still looks pretty good overall. And to the side of the spawn room is the Decepticon secondary room, that again generally mirrors the design of the Autobot one, though instead of a great view of Cybertron, the Decepticons get a control center, which again looks almost perfect aside from the missing texture issue. The Decepticon side room also retains the wraparound catwalk that connects to both the upper and lower levels, with a few minor aesthetic changes. Jumping back to the center of the map though, the area beneath the platform has a unique water room that can be accessed from every direction. And jumping up a level, the central platform itself isn't anything too special. In fact, it's probably the most dangerous point on the map, considering how open of an area it is and how many vantage points the enemy would have on you. But it's very easy to get away from and get back down to the very pretty inner John room. But yeah, I think that about covers everything for Havoc. Let's stomp onto the second DLC for the next map. <laughs> now, starting on the maps from the second DLC, we have Sector. A massive open area, again based in the city of Kaon. It's split straight down the middle, with the Decepticons on one side, and the Autobots on the other. It's also the only DLC map that has no missing textures. None. So that's nice. But before we continue, let's take a quick look at what you need to do to get this running. So setting up Sector is pretty much the same procedure as the previous two. You're gonna wanna start by copying the package data from the readme and pasting it into the trans engine file. Then, you're going to want to take your sector art and audio files and move them to your cooked PC folder. Now, after that's done, again return to the D2 files, add an O to the end of the D2 core cave art file, and do the same to the core audio file. Then, rename both the sector audio and art files to match that of the D2 core files. And finally, once that's all done, gather up all the packages listed in the trans engine file and paste them into your modded map folder. And you are now all set for Sector. Now entering the map is pretty much the same process as the previous two. Just fly to the same section as before, zoom in on the new area in the distance, press O to teleport to it, and after you ascend a little bit, you will be able to fully enter Sector. Now, going back to what I was saying earlier, Sector is a super open map, with the Decepticons taking up the right half and the Autobots taking the left half. Both sides have their own set of inner chambers that have openings everywhere, 
and make for a potential ambush around every bend. Nowhere is safe. But the map is especially known for the main open zone at the front, that makes Sector an absolute joy for scientists to rule the skies and deliver a swift strike on their enemy. Of course, being such an open area, with a vast number of windows at the back, make this map an absolute dream for snipers. Taking a more detailed look at the inner portions of the map, both the Autobot and Decepticon sides follow a pretty symmetrical design between each other. Both have a decent sized spawn room that connects straight to the open outside section as well as connects to the far back of the map. Though, there is some obviously distinct faction lighting between the two. You probably noticed that the Decepticon section of the map has another bug just like it did on Fortress. Though, as you can see, the Autobot side of the map is just fine. And if you continue your progression through the rear of the map, you will eventually come to a path that leads you to the central platform of the map. Speaking of the middle of the map, there is a small chamber at the far back of it where an overshield could potentially be found, just like the one that can be found at the front of the map. That is all there is to cover for Sector. It's fully operational, and the wide open space makes it a pretty cool map. Well, we still have a couple more maps to go, so let's get on to the next one. Continuing through the second DLC, we have Metropolis. Metropolis is a war-torn tunnel system in the heart of Iacon City. You'll see signs of damage everywhere across the map. And aside from a couple of bugs, it's a fully functional map! But first, let's get into how you go about setting this up. So the method for setting up Metropolis is pretty much the same as the last free, just with different files. Instead of replacing files for D2, we're going to be replacing files on A1. So let's start off by copying the package data into the trans engine file, which we'll be pasting under A1. After that, we head to our Cooked PC folder, bringing along both our Metropolis art and audio files. Now, we're going to head up to all the A1 files, and find A1 IAC Deco Interior Art. Add an O to the end of that, as well as do the same for the audio file. Then, we name both your Metropolis art and audio files to match those of the a1 files. And the only thing you need to do now is gather up all the packages from your cooked PC folder and paste them into your modded map folder. And once you have done all that, you are ready to venture into Metropolis. And to access these new changes quickly, head to the Inside the Decagon checkpoint. Now, upon starting the game, you may find it a little bit tricky to reach the new section, at least if you're not a flyer. But if you spam the O key, you'll probably eventually end up inside. Otherwise, you could just take a flyer and fly to the new area. But getting back to the map itself, Metropolis is again a war-torn tunnel system, just like I said, with its central zone being a hub that connects to every other part of the map. And seeing how this is set in Iacon, let's start our examination at the Autobot side of the map. Starting with the spawn room, the design of the Autobot side is pretty generic. Nothing too special to write home about, though the walls are packed with windows that look out onto the vast spanning cityscape. Oh, isn't it pretty? Below the initial spawn room is another wide open chamber. This is where the map begins to show just the extent of damage this place has taken. It has some gorgeous bright smoke coming through the right that just brilliantly contrasts with the dark environment. Moving back to the upper level, 
both the Autobots and the Decepticons have a higher vantage point that can be used as a great ambush site for their enemies. It can be reached by climbing a couple crates that will then provide you with an additional shield barrier for cover. Combine this with a cloak and you're a real force to be reckoned with. Additionally, there is a path that leads to the central hub of the map. Which isn't a particularly safe place to be, considering how many routes there are to it, but if you turn back around, you'll find another side route that leads straight to the enemy's side. A far more secure route compared to the one in the middle. Well, I think that covers everything for the Autobot's side, Let's transition over from the Autobot side over to the Decepticons. So, looking at the center of the map, both sides are fairly symmetrical. As you can see, both have an upper level that connects down to the lower level, which makes it not a bad place for an ambush. There is also another broken opening that lets in more of that sweet smoky light. And as far as bugs, this map is fully functional except for a couple, one of which you can see right here. Moving deeper into the con site, you will naturally see far more signs of damage. This is especially noticeable at the far rear of the map, as you will encounter full sections of the structure that have been completely blown out. I'd like to think this area would mirror the Autobot half before it was completely obliterated. But why don't we go and have a close look at all this damage, why don't we? As you can see, the whole back section of this place has been completely blown out. The Decepticons really did not spare this place. Anyway, moving on here, you'll see a couple tunnels on your left that lead back toward the center of the map. And heading up this ramp will lead you to the Decepticon spawn room, which gives you a great look at the shattered cityscape. So broken. Anyway, continuing the tour of the Decepticon side, you will naturally see far more signs of devastation as you progress through it. Broken piles of debris, holes in the ceiling, all that typical stuff. As well as another elevated vantage point, just like the Autobots. If there really was one thing I could say about this map, it would be how it really was a cloaker's paradise. This map was just made for scouts to cloak and sneak around. You just never know where your next attack might come from. And as you can see, the cons also have a primary path into the central hub. That and a side tunnel that can be used as a direct route towards the enemy base. That is more or less Metropolis. Definitely one of the more memorable maps. One I really wish they could have played on more. Ah oh well, there's just one more map to go, and it is right on the horizon. So let's get to it. Finishing it off with the fifth and final map included in the DLC, we have Horizon. An absolutely gorgeous map set on a ledge in Iacon City flowing with waterfalls, and the bright rays of the sun shining down upon the war-torn metal. It is fully textured, aside from one noticeable issue that almost ruins everything. I will say though, that Horizon is the most bugged out of all the maps I've covered. I'll address those as we get into them, but just to be advised, this map is pretty broken. Also, setting up this map to work properly is a bit more complicated than the others. So, let's cover that before we continue. Okay, so the first few steps are relatively the same. First, head to the README and copy all the necessary package data. <laughs> yeah, I know, there's a lot of them. And paste that into your Trans Engine file under the D3A section. Next, you're going to want to take your Horizon files, all three of them, 
and paste them into your cooked PC folder. Now, after you've done that, we're going to want to head up and find the D3A files. Once you're there, look for D3A IAC Court New Art. Find that and throw an O at the end of it. You're also going to want to do the same thing to D3A IAC Court Vista Art. Also very important, it has to be these points that you swap because there are some very specific shaders that are only found in these particular checkpoints. So only use it for these two. Now once that's done, go ahead and rename your Horizon Art file to the name of the Court Vista file. Then make a duplicate of that and rename that to the name of the Court New Art file. Yeah, you need to replace both. But, even after that, we're still not quite done here. Now, you're gonna wanna find D3A IAC Court New Design, add an O to the end of that, and do the same for Court Trans Art. Yeah, there's a lot of swaps here. Then you're gonna wanna find D3A Icon Drive 1 Design, copy that, Then, rename it to D3A Icon Court New Design. Then, make a copy of that and rename it to D3A Icon Court Trance Art. This is a bizarre combination that I know, but trust me, it works. Now, that takes care of all of that, but you're actually going to want to take your Court New O art file, this one right here, take that and move it to your modded map folder, along with the other packages you're going to need. I already have that gathered up with the rest of my packages. It's a slightly different file name, but you get the idea. Actually, let me just get rid of that old one so we have this properly set up. There we go. Then, take all your packages and slap them into the modded map folder. And you should be good to go. I'll adapt the readme file so that it has the proper name for the court new file. So don't worry about that. That'll be covered. That should be it. So let's hop back into Horizon. So upon starting chapter three, you're gonna start falling immediately. So turn to your right and teleport straight to the new zone you see. And you will have safely arrived at Horizon. Since this is again Iacon, let's start the tour with the Autobot side of the map. So, the Autobot and Decepticon sides of Horizon are fairly symmetrical. Both have an inner gallery for their base spawn point, and they are supposed to have representations of Cybertron in this gallery, but they do not load in initially. Both factions also have two side routes that lead to some watchtowers on the upper level. One major issue about this map, though, is that it suffers from a lot of collision issues. Yeah, a lot of objects that should ideally have colliders don't. The base spawns also have a primary front entrance that is all decked out in faction-appropriate colors. Oh, then you can see a, another instance of that same missing texture that was at the beginning of the map. Moving on, though, both sides also have some secondary paths one that leads back up to the upper level, and the other that heads underneath the center of the map. There's also a ramp of rubble that can be used to get up to the center of the map, which will lead to this glorious view. Truly spectacular. <clears throat> Continuing on, you can head to the central platform of the map, but watch your step though. This area has a few collision issues too. But you will eventually come to see the glorious city on the horizon. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Oh, also, if you look to your right, you'll see the remnants of the initial checkpoint. Those being a few Decepticon soldiers. Quirky, I know, but it was the best I could do. Anyway, if you want to get an even better view of the horizon, you can head to the balcony at the edge of the ramp. Watch out for the transparent area, though. You'll fall straight through it. And then you get this. 
glorious sight. It's a uh, pretty bright here. I'm not talking about the sun. Don't we have places to be? Anyway, moving on. Let's jump through this broken floor. Yeah, weird, right? And regardless, let us follow this luscious trail of flowing energon into the lower levels of the map. We will come to this tranquil spot. Pretty sweet, huh? This lovely little energon chamber is directly below the central section of the map and flows out from this chamber and off over the edge to the abyss below. Admittedly, however, this place is not nearly as functional as it looks, because if you look to the left of me here, you'll see an elevator shaft, which can be used to get straight back up to the upper level. However, if you try and do that, there's no elevator. Yeah. This is a result of the art file swap. Apparently, certain design elements like colliders and elevators aren't stored in the art files themselves. That's unfortunate, but let's carry on with the tour by heading back outside and returning to the upper level via this path. Which we'll reach by heading through this side path to our right. Through this path, you'll find a ramp that leads you straight to the upper level. Oh, and before I forget, there is one more issue to mention. There is a missing shader that you will encounter when you approach this waterfall, which, as you will see, causes your game to become some massive rainbow trip. This is actually the same issue you'll encounter if you make the art file swap in any checkpoint aside from this one, except that it will affect all of the map. It might be possible to load in this shader if it is used somewhere else in the game, but I'm not sure exactly where that would be. Either way, it's not too bad of an issue. And that will conclude the tour for the Autobot half of the map. Again, Horizon is a very beautiful site that truly is a work of art. But now, let's go take a look at the busted up half from the Decepticon perspective. <laughs> For glory! The Decepticon side, as you can see, generally follows the same design as the Autobot half of the map, just with some more Decepticon appropriate aesthetic changes. Mainly all that purple and destruction. They have the same watchtowers as the Autobots do, though the rest of the scenery has certainly seen better days. But it still looks great, in a weird, decimated sort of way. Continuing on the lower level, right outside the main base, the Decepticons also have a main entrance, again, decked out in faction-appropriate colors. However, the ground outside it is littered with large holes and dark energon crystals. Typical con architecture, I suppose. I also really like how the bright rays of the sun don't hit the Decepticon side at all. It's actually a really neat design aesthetic. Really cool. And just like the bots, the cons also have another route to reach the upper level. Again, symmetrical to the one used by the Autobots. And that is actually it for the Decepticon side of the map. Not a lot to show for them since we covered most of the map with the bots, but it's still a nice look all the same. Well, we've covered the Autobot side and the Decepticon side. But why don't we take a look at this great beauty from an aerial view? Afterburners on! This map actually works pretty well for all classes, I think. You've got some dark shady spots for scouts, tight battlegrounds for leaders and soldiers, and a decent open environment for scientists. Yeah! A 
of course, another blatant issue you'll probably notice is the significant lack of Omega Supreme at the city's edge. That is again another case of an object not being included in the art file. But what if I told you there was a way to fix all that? Allow me to show you. So fixing the colliders and restoring the missing objects is actually pretty simple to do. Gotta give a shout out to W. Dread for filling me in on this. But yeah, what you do is really simple. Take the base file from Horizon and replace it as the D3A audio file. Yeah, it's just that simple. Let me jump back into game and show you all just what's changed. For starters, both the Autobot and Decepticon bases have the appropriate planet models now included. The Autobots have a pure Cybertron, and the Decepticons, of course, have the corrupted Cybertron. With a bonus war machine atop it. The map also now has pickups, and the broken colliders are now fixed. The elevators in the center are now operational. And of course... The Great Omega Supreme can now be witnessed on the horizon, firing at some deceptive chops. There are a few bugs with this, as you can see, but overall, it's an almost perfect replica of the original map itself. And with that, we have covered all five of the DLC multiplayer maps. Aside from a few annoying little bugs, they were all pretty much complete. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this little blast into the past. Let me know which map was your favorite, and I'll have links to all the files you'll need to play this in the description down below. In the next few episodes, we'll be taking a look into one last part of the DLC, the Escalation Maps. So stay tuned for that, and thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Later! Pretty!